north on 89 towards the town of Meyer, heading to the destination of Echo Lake to meet Trevor Thomas, also known as Zero Zero. He's finished his Tahoe Rim Trail loop. Last night, Trevor and Tennille spent at Echo Peak, and they are hiking down to Echo Lake as we speak. And he has a welcoming party we're going to be part of. When you're out on the trail and you're hiking, how do you see? How I mean, do you see? Oh, it's easy. I don't. <laughs> I do what's called echolocation. I'm pretty much like a human bat. So I use the ambient sounds from the environment, and that will give me a basic picture. Not, not like a photograph, but it will give me an idea of my environment, whether I'm standing on a cliff or whether I'm in an open clearing. The way I explain it to a sighted person is, have you ever been walking maybe through your house in the dark? And then all of a sudden, for no reason whatsoever, you just stop because you maybe you left a cabinet door open and you knew it was there, but you had no reason why. Blind people, what we do is we harness what you call facial, facial perception, and we actively use that to perceive our environment. I have what's called atypical central serious choroid retinopathy. In layman's terms, your eye is a camera. One day, my autoimmune system woke up and targeted the macula, which is the film if it wasn't a camera, targeted it as a foreign body and attacked it and killed it over a period of eight months. And the macula, there is no stem cell that's gonna fix it. There is no transplant that's gonna do it. The world is mostly, it's about 90% visual. I have to replace that 90% that I don't have anymore with every other sense, every other feeling that I have. Like when you feel the breeze. Mm -hmm. The breeze can tell me so many things. The breeze can tell me the way the trail is going to go. It can tell me the shape of a valley that I'm in. The sound of the breeze, not only the feeling, will give me an idea of where I am. Um, I pay attention when I'm on trail to what I call microclimates. Okay. If I walk, and, um, if I'm walking down a trail and all of a sudden there's a little cold pocket, you know, a lot of times that's, that's going to mean, hey, pay attention, there's everything. water sure. close. Sure. And then at, when people ask me what it's like to be me, I have a very simple exercise that I encourage people to try, and that will give you a vague idea of what it's like. Get a blindfold, then go to your living room, put on the blindfold and sit on your couch. A room that you're very intimate with, probably the one that you've put the coffee table where it's supposed to be, you've put the lamps on the end tables. And I want you to get up and I want you to navigate without breaking things, hurting yourself, to your kitchen, another room that you should know intimately. Find your fridge, open the fridge and get a Coke out or a beer or whatever it is that you're seeking. Then once you've done that, go back, sit on the same sit on the same cushion of the couch that you were on and ask yourself one question. How confident are you that what you have in your hand is what it is that you were looking for? Then you'll know a little bit about what it's like to be blind. To know what it's like to be me, I want you to get a map of the Appalachian Trail. Look how long it is. It's 2,175 miles long. Could you do that exercise you just did in a room that you were very comfortable with? Could you repeat that for 2,100 miles in a place you knew nothing about? Then you'll know what it's like to be me. Paying attention. Mm, I have my big Nobody girl. Was paying attention to me. Every guide dog school in the country turned me down because of who I am and what I do. Because, because they thought you were nuts. They thought I was crazy and I thought I was reckless. Yeah. And then there was the one guide dogs for the blind that said, Nobody's ever done what you want to do. And I've heard that before too. But the big thing was they said, we want to try. Awesome. And so, so that was, you know, that's another barrier broken down. I choose to do what I do for two reasons. Number one, self-accomplishment. You know, ultimately I, I have goals. I want to achieve my goals. But I also bloody myself on rocks to show the sighted world that blindness and in severe visual impairment is not a death sentence. You can achieve, you know, whatever it is that you set your mind to. Sure, there are some things that I had to let go, but there are so many other things that I can do. I'm going to do them exceptionally well. And I find it's a need to 
show young blind kids because they haven't been subjugated by society. Yeah. They have hope, they have dreams, and they haven't heard no so many times that they just take their lot in life. You know, I have to show them that somebody is going to say no, but you don't have to listen. That's right. People have asked me that question a lot. You know, would you get your sight back? You know, if somebody said, here's the magic cure, would you take it? If you would ask me that maybe three, four, five years ago, I probably would have said, yeah. Anymore, I'd have to say no. Hmm. Why? I'm, I'm comfortable with who I am. I've come to grips with things. I like who I am. The way I look at it, would life be easier if I could see? Sure, I could jump in my car and go to the convenience store if I needed to. The other side of the coin, would it be more rewarding? I don't think so.